is called, and this is my four Xbox controller tips for Age of Empires 4. Tip number one is to use the right trigger. The right trigger can be used for many things, but for today we're going to cover the building aspect of it. When you use the right trigger on an open piece of ground, it comes up with this menu here. Hover over to the right and you'll get the build menu. Click A to open the build menu. From here you can build any of your faction's buildings with the nearest closest villager. So if I wanted to build a house, I would click on the house, choose the location where I want the house to go, press A, and the nearest villager will go there. Obviously you could select villagers with up on the D-pad, but that is random. It doesn't select the closest one, so if I'm here, it doesn't collect the closest one. But if I wanted to build a house with the closest villager, I click the right trigger, go across that build menu, click A, click house, click A again, and the nearest villager is on their way. On top of that, if you click the right trigger on the resource that you want to mine or harvest, hover over the resource. To know that you're going to select it, you'll see the A button pop up on the screen. Select it with right trigger, then instead of going to the right, because that will send a villager, you need to select the top menu to get the mill. This again will send the nearest villager to build building. This works the same for stone, gold, wood, and deer. This also works on buildings. So for example, if we take our mill here and select it with the right trigger instead of A, right trigger will open up and we can build a farm straight away. Hold the left trigger to build multiple farms and your villagers will start getting to work. This also works for collecting relics. So instead of finding your monks on the screen, you can instead see the relic, click right trigger on the relic, hover over the right menu, click A and the nearest monk will go to collect this relic. If we check on our monk, we can see that he is on his way to collect this relic. Be careful though, because once he collects it, he will stand still with it. You do need to order him back to the monastery. This also works for traders and their trading posts. Right trigger the trading post, select the top one, send trade cart and your nearest trade cart will go. A quick bonus tip with the right trigger. Let's say you want to build an age up building or a town center. When using the right trigger, it only sends one villager. However, if you want more to go to make this building go a bit quicker, make sure you deselect everything, right trigger the building that's being built, then set the right menu and it will say send villager. You can queue multiple villagers to keep coming to help build until you reach your desired number. Tip number two is using the LB button. The LB button is useful for multiple things, but for today, we're gonna to focus on military production and rally points. Military production is super important and it usually needs to be done when you're not looking at your base. So how do we do this without looking at our base? Firstly, press the LB button. You get quite a few options here. You got left on D-pad for quick find, right for buildings, down for units and up for naval. We're going to focus on the buildings tab and a little bit of the quick find tab. So buildings, let's say we want to build four spearmen using all of our barracks. We find the barracks in the menu, select A, and then we get all of our barracks selected. Now I want to build four spearmen. So I look at the spearmen, click it four times, you see the number four, and all four spearmen are gonna be built at the same time because I have four barracks. If I did this just double tapping one of the barracks and selecting all the barracks on the screen, it wouldn't actually select all four. So just to be safe, we use the LB button, buildings, find the desired building, barracks, four spearmen. However, they've all spawned just outside the building, which is not ideal. We want them to gather up. So again, LB, find the building, barracks, rally point, and select our new rally point. Now when spearmen are built, they will go to this new rally point every single time. Now let's say I want to build up a force and I want all of my units in the same spot. To do this, LB, this time we're going to use the quick find menu because this is gonna make it much quicker. Left on the D-pad, and then you're gonna select the top button with A. This is all military production buildings. And as you can see, you could build a variety of units from here. However, sometimes it misses off quite a few. I wouldn't recommend using this menu to try and find a specific unit. However, I would use it for the rally point. Select the rally point, and again, Find a location on the map for all your units to go to, and that's where they'll go when they spawn. So let's say I'm fighting in the middle of the map and I want to keep reinforcing this position with units. My main army is already there, but I need to keep producing more. What I can do is LB, left on D-pad for quick find, up, click A, and then click the rally point, set the rally point to my reinforcement location, then I can start building units. LB, buildings, what do I want? Let's get some bowmen, so I select five of them. I also want some mana arms, so let's go to the barracks, let's get five of them. And I want some horsemen, and I would like a couple of siege units, let's get some mangonels. As you can see, all of my new units are now going to this new location as they're being spawned. Every single building is being used, it's not just one or two. All my buildings are being used optimally. Now let's say you're not overly happy with this rally point, and you actually want your horses to go somewhere else. So to do this, LB, buildings, select the stables, rally point, make the rally point somewhere else for your horses. The rest of your units will keep spawning where you want them to. So when I get to build more, so I've built some archers, built some spearmen, and now I've built some horses. The horses should go to their new location, whilst every other unit will go to the one I set before. And as you can see, my units are still reinforcing the main position, but the horses are going to their new one. 
LB is also useful for researching text. If I click LB now, and then I go to the quick find, which is left on the D-pad, over on the right, we have research buildings. If I select A, it will select all of my research buildings. And from here, I can research on the fly. I don't need to go back to my town center, try to find my blacksmith, and then research from there. I can stay on the battlefield, controlling my army. LB, left on D-pad for quick find, right for research buildings, and let's get some more armor and attack. I then press B to back out the menu, and I can go back to controlling my army and continuing the fight. So using the LB, you can research, you can create units, you can set rally points, and you never need to go back to your town center or your village, or look at your military production, you can just keep building whilst managing your army. My third tip is about how to move around the map. There's many ways you can move around the map. The most basic is just to use the left stick. Another way is if you have any units selected, you can click the left stick to snap to them. So let's say I'm in my town center, and I click left stick, it will snap to the army that I had selected. This also works for buildings, so if you have your town center selected, you can click the left stick to go to your town center. To move quicker, hold the right bumper. This will make your camera move much faster, but sometimes it's still not quick enough. So this is where map markers come into the game. Map markers can be placed by pressing left and right stick at the same time. However, this doesn't work every time, and I'd actually recommend not using this. If I had units selected, and I went to set a map marker over on this gold, for example, if I accidentally click left stick slightly before, it will snap to my army and then set a map marker on my army, which is not ideal. So instead of clicking left and right stick, I press the right bumper to open the minimap. Then let's say I want to set a map marker on my town center. I will move the little circle use it with the left stick to where I want the map marker to go. Press Y, click the right stick in, and that's where my map marker now is. Let's say I want one on the sacred site in the top right of the map. Highlight it with the circle, click Y, click right stick, and that is done. And let's say I want one more on the left sacred site. Again, move your left analog stick to that location, press Y, click right stick, and you're done. So what do these map markers do? If you have the minimap open, you can quickly go between these markers by flicking the right stick in that direction. Let's say top right, move my stick to the top right, bottom middle, bottom middle, top left, top left. This is all well and good, but it's even easier if you just hold the left trigger and do the exactly the same. So holding left trigger, flick between the flags, and you can quickly navigate the map. First way is to tap down on the deep, which will undo each one. The second way is to hold down on the D-pad, which will clear them all. The third way, and my favorite way, is to flick the right stick to the one you want to remove, click right stick, and it will remove it. And that is how I move around the map. My next tip is about maneuvering your army with a controller. As you can see in this clip, my enemy has repositioned their whole army, leaving their siege exposed to a, a quick attack. Once those anti-siege units are down, I'm free to move my whole army in with the siege units to support them. So how do we get around this on console? So let's assume this rock is the enemy army and we want to reposition backwards a little bit. To do this, make sure your whole army selected, move backwards a tiny bit and then set a waypoint forward again. This will ensure that your siege stays towards the back. Now it's not ideal, but it is better than the clip that you just saw. We set one way and your siege turns around. This is if you just want to use the left on the D-pad for selecting all of your units. I would though start to recommend using control groups to really get your army to move in different locations. I'll make a separate video on using control groups effectively soon. Thank you for watching my tips video. If you liked this video or found a tip that was useful for you, please give me a like and subscribe as there'll be more content like this in the future. If you have something that you'd want me to show next, please comment down below on what you want to see. Thank you and see you next time.